Hello and welcome to the Kent McBride Show for January 23rd, 2018. I'm your host, Gary Smith. And on today's show, we're going to talk with Coach McBride about all things uh, Vulcan basketball. And since this is the first shoe of the semester, Happy New Year to all the Vulcan fans and Happy New Year, Coach. Welcome back to your second season of a uh, highly rated uh, Co Coach Kent McBride Show on CUTV. <laughs> Thank, <laughs> thanks, Gary. Glad to have you back. Glad uh, everything was used oh, in good working thank order. Thank you. We're ready to, to start this uh, semester. And, Coach, it's, it, it's hard to believe we're in January and basketball season's two-thirds of the way done. Yeah, we sat down with our guys the other day, and I think we had, I think now it's probably like 34 days until the, the playoffs start. So Whew. it went by quick, and, you know, it does that every year. You look back this time every year, and everybody's shocked at where we are. But um, this is the fun part. Now the end of January, February is when the, when the fun starts. Well, before we talk about some uh, more current things like the last couple games, let's try and catch all the Vulcan fans up to uh, how we got to this point in the season. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm sure for you it's a blur since you know basketball yeah. is the one sport or one of the main sports that goes on it seems like year round. You don't have any right. days off. No, you know I, I think me and my wife sat down the other day. I think we had a, the Sunday off after Slippery Rock, and she said, "You realize this is the first day you've been home in about three weeks." It's like, no, you just <laughs> and, and that's where it becomes a little bit of a blur because between game preparation, practice, and you're trying to get down the road and recruit. So it's good, you know, just the ebbs and the flows and and. Uh, but it's still, at the end of the day, it's coaching basketball. I get to coach a sport for a living. That's, and it's a fun fun yeah. thing to do, and uh, you definitely have a lot of passion for what we see on the sidelines. I probably could be a marathon runner with the amount of time you go up and down the uh, the sideline. My, my <laughs> Fitbit logs a lot of steps. My wife tells me I cheat when I get home and we start comparing <laughs> steps. She says, that doesn't count. It's not fair or whatever. So, yeah, it's, it keeps me young. Well, how has this season uh, getting to this point been a little different? Last season, uh, you kind of got hired late, and mm -hmm. it seemed like, with everything just the way it was, playing catch up with you know getting people in and everything. Right. Of it. How's it been different from having a whole off season in the program? Um, that's a good question. It's just we still have a lot of new guys, and we the the terrible part is trying to get these guys acclimated, and it's kind of been in ebbs and flows with injuries and not having a consistent lineup, a consistent practice team. So um, that's been a challenge. But this is still a fun group. These guys are guys that really enjoy the game of basketball. They um, come into work every day, fun to be around. But still just trying to get guys to see the game through this, the lens that we're trying to get them to see it through. And it's been more of a battle so this year probably than last year um, just because of the different backgrounds everybody's coming through. But um, it's been fun, and hopefully it becomes a little more enjoyable here the last uh, 34 days or so. I mean, it's, it's still hard to believe that you're, you're saying the word 34 days to playoffs. I mean, it's hard to believe. Um, but it goes, it's a long season, but it goes fast. It goes super fast. And, it, and just like you said, because, you know, people that are outside of this world, you know, Thanksgiving and Christmas are breaks for them. I mean, we get a couple days, and we're right back in um, into the grind. And New Year's is really no different day for us. So those breaks that, um, that are sometimes afforded in life with other professors, just not afforded here. Now we get breaks down the road. But, you know, right here it's just kind of a blur. You just take it one day at a time, and you have tunnel vision with everything like I – there's times I don't remember what day of the week it is. I just know, hey, we're two days until we play so and so. We got two days of preparation. That's how I operate my weeks. What day of the week is? I generally I don't know. That's one of the good things about the PSAC. They have that set schedule: Wednesday and Saturday, yeah. Wednesday and Saturday. They threw that one Monday game in there, which was uh, one of the most exciting Whew. games in recent history. Who, who, the lock who was it? Okay, yeah, yeah, that was a, uh, yeah, that one. You talk about stress, but that was a, uh, that was a fun. That'll be one you remember. Mm -hmm. um, you know, with that one in particular. Just being down what we were down and showed a lot of resolve and lost a couple of days off my life probably in that <laughs> game, but added a couple of gray hairs over here on the side. But those guys really showed that what was encouraging about that one is you saw what we can be. You saw what we're trying to get to. And, you know, success isn't always a straight line. There's mm -hmm. ups and downs to it. And we're trying to ride out the downs to get to the ups. And definitely was, that was one of the high points of, of the season and probably the past 15, 20 years in, in Vulcan sports in general because that was a heck of a comeback on a Monday night. And, you know, we're getting to that point in the season that we're finally, the break is over, Get hopefully mm -hmm. get some people in the in the stands because, you know, I, I don't know about you, but having the semester start, it's nice to see people on campus. Yeah, too. and and like I told our guys, I'm, I wanted our guys to get back to a routine. The problem you have here over Christmas, you're here for just short of a month. You know, we have practice every day at noon, so, you know, those guys are probably rolling out of bed at 11, probably staying up playing video games till 1. They just don't get in any routine. We want them up, going to class, getting into weights, getting into practice, and then all of a sudden when you get to 9 or 10 o'clock, hopefully you're tired and you go to bed and you get on a normal routine. So it's, it's vital for us to get back into this type of, 
of normal life structure because when you're here and nobody's here besides you and the women's basketball team. So it just becomes very mundane what you do every day and you lose your luster in practice. So we're very excited to have, cl to have, have students back on campus for the crowd and also to give our guys more of a structured routine. Yeah, the only downfall is the parking is a little bit more of a struggle right yeah. now, but that's a uh... That's a, that's a minor inconvenience to, to see to see human faces. But, uh, <laughs> Coach, let's start bringing it back to uh, more recent uh, basketball. You know, we're towards the end of uh, the first mm -hmm. go-around of PSAC West play. Um, last week had two PSAC West games. Uh, we'll talk first about the Wednesday night game against IEP. Um, IEP team that's, you know, been at the top of PSAC for, it seems like, the past three or four years. Yep. And tough task for any team on a Wednesday night. You know, they're the gold standard. That's – with decisions that we make um, from recruiting, from strategy, from anything, right now it's, all right, does this decision help us beat IUP? And anybody that neglects the fact that they are the gold standard is probably just being a little jealous for however you feel, but that's, that's who you're trying to beat. And that was an absolute abysmal start to a game. And you, you contribute to a lot of things. And the message we had to the guys is, you know, Luca went down early in that week with an injury. Uh, we had Terry Davis out with an injury, and we came out and felt sorry for ourselves. Um, were we undermanned? Yes. But you still come out and play the game. And our guys, the first eight minutes of that game, absolutely felt sorry for ourselves and kind of went through the motions. And the one thing you can see with IUP, they come every game to play, and you can feel it in warm-ups. When you see Joe Lombardi's team come out to warm up, you feel the fact that they're ready to compete. Mm -hmm. But that's why – they are where they are because they understand the value of every game and they understand that nine times out of ten they're going to take the opponent's best shot so they better be prepared for it and that's a mature basketball team and we just we just didn't we weren't ready to play it we have some highlights so we can roll as we talk over this but despite the slow start uh you know the team fought back and, mm -hmm. and made it a game towards towards the end we see here like i said don't ignore the uh 13-0 run there but yeah, yeah don't yeah, look at the bottom score some, uh, we get some threes you know yeah, we, once we, again, once we stop feeling sorry for ourselves and realize that IUP was not going to, they don't give a crap what the score is. They're going to keep playing their game and they're going to keep trying to put you away even worse. You know, we responded and started playing just a little bit faster with a little bit more purpose. And that's something we've struggled to do so far this year is find our purpose all the time. And um, if you look at our stats, if you, people who follow it closely, when we defend, we're really special offensively. Um, it's a direct correlation, and when we don't defend, we're we're not very good offensively. When the other team's making the battle, well, what happened is the first, I think, eight minutes of the game, IUP was shooting in the upper 70%. Mm -hmm. Well, that makes it hard for us to, to be very efficient offensively. Then the rest of the game, we held them in the low 40s to the 30s, and all of a sudden, you're able to get some easier baskets based off your defense, and that's the battle that we're fighting. Um, the ball started moving, guys started feeling more confident because we are defending. So. That's a battle we're going to continue to fight. That's a battle we'll continue to push. We're not going to change our standard for how we're going to play. And, um, you know, every day we go into film, we got film today going in. And, you know, our message is going to be, look how we defend. We don't show much offense. We show a lot of defense. And uh, Phil Alexander, you saw there going, uh, he just won PSAC Freshman of the Week. So good for him on that front. And uh, with, I guess the knock on these injuries, it's, it's unfortunate. But one thing it's done is it puts that guy in a role to where he's going to really grow in the next month and a half. Um, he's going to have to, and it'll springboard him into a sophomore campaign. So um, excited about that. It's just got some guys to play, like Eric Green there. Plays every day, practices every day. He's one of our most consistent people in terms of what he does, and um, he's been rewarded for how he's practiced. So we got back into the game here. You see five minutes to go. I think we ended up getting it to five with, with two minutes to go, and um, that's just with their seniors kind of – played a big role and made sure they got what they wanted down the stretch. But was proud of our resolve. It's just, you know, you wish our guys would respond and before a guy, before somebody walks up and hits them with an uppercut in the chin, um, you got to be able to walk out of the locker room and, and be ready to play. And the two games this week, we just haven't done it. We haven't walked out of the locker room ready to play. I don't know if we're feeling sorry for ourselves or if we're waiting for somebody else to make a play. Um, but we have to get over it. There's 34 days left, so find a way to get over it. Uh, we said just a minute ago, you know, the one thing with PSAC West is you don't have a lot of time to think about uh, the game that just happened. And after that IEP game, you, you're facing a trip to Mercyhurst, which under the best circumstances is a, is a long trip, and it's also a difficult place to play. What was the, the thought going into that game um, after the IEP game? The thought was we knew we had to defend them. And I thought that was our the, – the bad thing is we soured probably our best defensive effort. Um, I think we held a 38% shooting. 
That was probably one of our best defensive efforts of the year. And we soured that by not rebounding. I mean, if you look at basketball in general, 77% of games are won by the team who wins the rebound margin. And we haven't done that this year. Last year, we were the second best defensive field goal percentage in the West. We defended the three best better than any team. And we weren't great at rebounding. I think we were minus maybe one. This year hasn't been the case. So the mentality going up to Mercer's was, hey, defend and everything will take care of itself. But we were just, you know, that was one where we were abysmal offensively. I think both teams set the game of basketball back about 20 years. When you looked at halftime, I think we were shooting 25%. Mm -hmm. They were shooting 27%. I mean, the score was 19 to 17, for goodness sakes. And um, they came out to start the second half, and they smacked us in the mouth offensively. They went on, I think, a 16-0 run. Mm -hmm. And we called timeouts. We tried to figure it out. But, you know, it goes back to, you know, we have our different moments of not trusting each other, and that's kind of where we are. And, you know, we, it's a battle. We just keep fighting, and we're not going to stop fighting it until whatever, 34, 35, 36, 37 days. Mm. We'll go fight the battle. And it seemed like in that game, Mercer was, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it seemed like they were trying really to uh, hold possession and, and keep your offense, because your offense can definitely put up the points. I mean, 80 some, yeah. upper 80 some points a game, but it seemed like they were really trying to hold the, the ball into late, late in the shot clock. And that, you know, like I said, you, it's 19 to 17 in halftime. Yeah. And we knew that going in that, that, uh, Gary's teams always, you know, they try to limit possessions a little bit, and we knew that going in. And the plan was to mix up defenses if we have to because they're very much a rhythmic offense. And we did a good job of that, I thought. But gosh, when you can't score, it's just demoralizing. And we couldn't. I mean, the unfortunate reality of college basketball right now is a lot of guys' attitudes are directly tied to whether they're making shots. As much as coaches try to fight it, it's what they are. Mm. They, they Everything, their, their defensive effort, their focus level – is generally tied to directly how they're playing the offensive game. And when you're not playing the game offensively, we went through about a three-minute stretch where we didn't defend. They went on a 6 no run. And that cost you. In a game like that, all of a sudden, when you're down 12 to Mercyhurst, it feels like you're down 42 because you know now the game's going to slow to a crawl. Now your possessions are really going to be limited. And that's what happened. And, and we never recovered it, especially when you don't rebound the basketball. And we got 17 offensive rebounds. So... Again, it's a battle we're going to continue to fight. It's something we're going to continue to stress. And the only thing I can think is when we get tired of getting whipped, we'll change. Mm -hmm. That's and that's one of the best things about sport. You know, eventually you're going to get tired of taking it and you're going to give it back. And, you know, with everyone and, and the PSAC, you get a chance to see all these teams one more time. And uh, before we talk about the Clarion and uh, the Slip Rock games coming up this week, let's take a look at both the PSAC East and West standings, just get an idea of where everybody is starting the West, see, uh, fighting for that last – uh, yeah, playoff spot and right that's, there. you know, that was one of our goals coming in. You know, we, we, we didn't, I should say, we really didn't set goals coming in. We wanted to be the best team we can be in February, and we're in a position. Um, we just got to, one, we have to get healthy. Mm -hmm. um, Terry Davis sitting out when he's your, I think he's your second leading scorer and your leading, your second leading rebounder, and one of your guys that is just consistent every day. When he, he sat out basically since the Lock Haven game. He powered through the Lock Haven mm -hmm. game on a leg when the trainers actually told him to sit out, and he told him no. Um, and since then, he really hadn't played. So we need to get him back here as soon as we can. And you know, we lost Luca for the year, which the, the big issue with losing Luca is he was a guy that on the court he told me what to do, mm -hmm. and I was perfectly okay. I mean, I think at the UPJ game he was calling offense. Mm -hmm. I didn't care. He called them all. And losing a guy that's just that stable. Is something we have to grow through, and that's where Phil's going to step up. Uh, we have to have a little bit better guard play. But, you know, we're right where we can strike there, but you, we got to start playing better mm -hmm. today. If we Every day we don't is a wasted opportunity. And, um, you know, we the one at Seton Hill is the one I think we're still letting Herrick carry over with us is the game you're up 10 with 220 to go or something, and you just stop guarding. Mm -hmm. And uh, But we're there. we got to take it one game at a time, and um, we'll battle. we got practice today. We'll get in and get after it, and we'll – Keep working for improvement. And you mentioned, uh, you know, it's horrible to have the amount of injuries your team's had. Mm -hmm. It seems like, you know, we see the bench, you see a lot of guys crutches, almost like a, a mash unit down there yeah. sometimes for you guys. But you did mention that, you know, it, the good thing is some other guys are playing. And, and freshman Phil Alexander, player of the week, and freshman right. of the week, you know, you look at him right now from the beginning of the year to now, he doesn't look like a freshman. No. You know, when, when we got the kid, we knew when we got Phil, we knew we, we knew what we had. And when we had our roster coming in, the unfortunate part was we set our roster up to where he was going to be like the fifth or sixth guard. You have, you know, Dante Williams never played a second. He's out with an injury all year. Then you have Luca drop and you have Terry drop. And it's like, all right, Phil, here's your time. Mm -hmm. And the thing we keep talking to Phil about is 
don't change the way you play based on who's on the court. He defers to me. He defers too much. Um, his teammates trust him. The coaching staff trust him. But sometimes he's still in the mode of like, well, I'm a freshman. I'm not supposed to be doing this. Like, I mean, we don't, we don't care what level you are. We don't care what class you are. You make the play that you see fit. And the coaches, will tr we trust what you're going to do. So that's what we're trying to get him to. And that's part of just growing up. And I had a conversation with him yesterday that, you know, the unfortunate part, Luca is out. Luca's not going to be back. We don't know when Terry's going to be back. So you look at it for him as a, as a spot to where now you really get to build momentum going into your sophomore year and your career moving forward to where you're getting looked at by the older guys to, hey, we need you to step up and make plays. And he will. Just, the you know, he probably could have won peace sack freshman of the week weeks ago if he'd have been an opportunity where he played more. And um, we're really excited about that kid. Good kid, does everything right, does everything you ask him to do, and uh, he'll respond just fine. And he's definitely responding fine, and as a true freshman, that's got to be tough. Just, A, go, start in college, but B, just the everything that's – thrown on as an athlete and in the offense and defense you guys are running yeah. the schedule and it's impressive to see the growth from like I said the beginning of the year to now. Well the thing and I you know what's great about freshman is when you get him here he doesn't know anything but playing hard mm -hmm. so when you watch him on film he's he might make mistakes he might not be in the right spot he might not read something but you can't find that kid not playing hard mm -hmm. and that's what's great about freshmen when they walk in they just want to play so he just wants to get on the court and he knows if I, I'm going to get on the court by showing coach I'm going to play really hard well then you get older guys that feel comfortable, and they think, well, I don't have to play hard all the time. Well, that's why right now we're being kind of led by a freshman because his effort's standing out, mm -hmm. and some of the older guys' effort is showing that, hey, you're not playing as hard as this young guy who's 18 years old, 19 years old. You know, we had the conversation with him yesterday. Do you play basketball or are you a basketball player? Phil Alexander's a basketball player because he values defense. He runs back. Mm -hmm. Some guys tend to be back, just play the game of basketball. I mean, definitely a hard worker, like I said. We saw on Saturday at Mercyhurst, you know, we were sitting there right next to you and your, your staff, and, you know, it seemed like he was going up and down, up and down, and, you know, that's what, what you want from a player. You, and, and I'm not going to take him off the court. Mm -hmm. When you have a guy who does that, well, son, you're going to play until you get tired, and I'll let you get over here and get a drink of water, and, 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 I'll put, and I'm going to put you back in the game. Because um, the thing as a coach, we've talked to him about, well, we can stop coaching effort, we can coach execution. Mm -hmm. But you can't coach execution until you stop coaching effort. Well, with Phil Alexander, we don't have to coach effort, ever. Some of the other guys, we're still here January, whatever day it is, or we'll go into film today and still show effort. Well, when you get that corrected, maybe that's record will turn around. Until you get that corrected, don't change. Don't expect the narrative to change. And the first chance to uh, turn the record around comes uh, tomorrow night mm -hmm. at Mer uh, Mercer's. Adam Clarion. Er Clarion. I typed all these graphics in yesterday. <laughs> I'm seeing uh, PSAC teams in my sleep. But going up to Clarion, it's a it's a you know close trip. It's a good trip for a Wednesday night. Right. And it, you know, it, it coming after a, lot, a tough last week, probably a good thing to see. A, a nice close trip. Uh, what is Clarion on? Uh, have you seen on film? I know they've um, had a struggle of the year this year. They're but. struggling a little bit. Um, they're young. You know, like they're starting a. You know, Grumley's there, and he's. I think he's a salt. I think he's a junior at this point. Senior, good player. I mean, he's solid. He's like what we talk about with me and we were having a conversation earlier about guys in our team that we know what we're getting every day. Coach Williams with him knows what he's getting every day. Um, but then they're starting a freshman center in Watson. Four new starters. It's Grumley around a bunch of new guys. You got Mraz, who's a freshman. He's won Player of the Week, Freshman of the Week, I don't know, five, six times. So those guys are going through some growing pains, but I think he's done it the right way because he's doing it with young guys, and they're going to grow together. It's just they're dangerous because they're, they're, they don't limit the possessions. They still play very confidently, um, but you hope they just don't figure it out on Wednesday mm -hmm. because they'll see flash. You watch on film, be three or four possessions. Like, all right, that guy's going to be a pretty good player, but – he still is a young team trying to put it together on a every possession. Not as much night in, night out, but every possession. But we're fighting the same battle. So we'll see. Now, are they more of an up-tempo team, or are they more of a uh, just more possession? And They'll be up-tempo if you let them. Okay. It's one of those to where if we don't get back in defense, they, they're not afraid to take the pass on the first or second shot and put the ball up in the air, um, So which we tend to do. Sometimes we tend to not value sprinting back on defense. But uh, if we'll sprint back, then – they won't necessarily limit possessions as much as Mercer's. They'll let us get up and down um, some, but what they do is they change defenses a lot. So it's going to be, hey, do we decipher the defense? Do we know what we're trying to do in that defense, where we're trying to play when they're in that defense? Because that's what Coach Williams does. They change from zones, demands to presses, to zone, demand to press, and you got to be able to pick it up. And that's going to be Wednesday night. Uh, if you can't be there, I, I definitely say come out, but you can see on the screen, uh, CUTV and WCA will be there. Uh, the game will be live. Uh, on WCL at 7.30 or thereabouts. And then um, hopefully we're still trying to work it out that we can have the live uh, YouTube link uh, from Clarion because um, you never know with cell service and all that fun stuff that 
that goes into it, but definitely you'll, there'll be a way to keep keep tabs of the uh, the game on Wednesday night. And coach, with it being a Wednesday night game, first one back in the semester, how's that changed the, the travel and practice and all that? Fun, um, all the fun logistics stuff that no, the fans never get to see. Well, you now you got to schedule around mm -hmm. classes. Before it was like, hey, we're gonna leave at 10, 11, we just left whenever we wanted to leave. Well, now you got to be conscious of guys in class. Um, you travel with the women, so you kind of got to balance that. But it's typically not bad. Us and Coach Strong, we work great together. So being on schedule and us not fighting for who wants what, that's pretty simple. But we needed, we, we looked forward to the Mercier's trip because we needed our guys to get out of here and be around each other. Well, mm -hmm. you know, we got to find a way to win on the road. And I don't care who we're playing on Wednesday. It could be Duke. It could be California High School. We need to learn how to win on the road. And it takes a level of toughness of defending and rebounding because, you know, we went up to Slippery Rock last time, they pounded us on the glass. You go up to Mercer's, they pound us on the glass, we defend. If we want to be a road team, you look, it's about defending and rebounding. And we'll see Wednesday if we've learned our lesson. And, Coach, Wednesday night, you know, for the purposes of TV, this will air twice. Uh, we got to talk a little bit about looking. I know coaches never mm -hmm. want to look ahead. but That's fine. You know, Saturday, um, be Slippery Rock at home. Uh, the game will also be live on PCN statewide. Check your local listings. But Slippery Rock, this is the first game, or the second time we've seen Slippery Rock this year, and it seems like it was only two weeks ago because I think it was. Yeah. Um, was it? It seems like it was. It might have been three weeks ago, but it's going quick right now. But um, what did you see on uh, live, and what did you have you seen on tape since then? I know it's hard to answer it, since you're not, no, well, I remember them. I mean, it's, it's, it's not as much as Slippery Rock about what's on tape. It's about who's their coach. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is when Kevin Reynolds is your basketball coach, you're going to defend, and you're going to rebound, or you're not going to play. Mm -hmm. And they have a culture within Slippery Rock that those two things are valued above everything else. Um, they limit possessions offensively, not as much as last year because they're, you know, Bruce Burrell can play, Mike Attil's an, an animal. Um, so they're better offensively, so they're playing a little faster than they were last year. But when they shoot at their best offense is their second shot. I think they had 26 offensive rebounds mm -hmm. up there. And, and I feels like I'm saying a broken record. It's nothing we didn't know, but we just didn't do a very good job of it. So we always make a, not a joke, but we talk about it. I bet Slippy Rock does rebounding drills at shoot around, mm -hmm. um, live rebounding drills, because they just go get it. So it's not as much about the X's and O's in that game. Obviously, that always helps, but it's going to be about the mentality that we walk in with. Are you ready for a Mike Tyson, Lennox Lewis heavyweight match, or are you coming here to play a perimeter based? shoot jump shots type of game because if you do we're going to walk out with two black eyes and a bloody nose yeah they definitely seeing them live uh, a couple weeks ago they, they think they might be the biggest team in the psac or at least one of the biggest team i mean in terms of height and size i mean there's some big it, post players down there and it's how they play not only I mean, iup's big and i'm not saying I, this is not me and iup's not physical slippery rocks just physical when the shot goes up they don't care if you're between them and the basket they don't they don't shy away from contact when you got mike Attil, who was a I mean, for goodness sakes, he played tight end in the ACC. So yeah. you think that guy's scared of contact? And they're not. And sometimes we tend to run away from that. And um, it's one of those where we'll show film of what they did successful against us the first time. And if we come back and do the same thing the second time, well, then to me, that's that's on you. It's, it's on us as a program. But you can't let them do the same thing to you twice. Mm. So we'll see. And that's this Saturday. So two. Big, exciting games of uh, basketball this week, Wednesday night at uh, 7.30 from Clarion. And then if you can't be there, make sure you come to the Convocation Center Saturday at 3 o'clock. And if you have a good excuse, uh, <laughs> you know you can watch live on PCN or on the PSAC app and also CUTV and WCA will have you covered. And all sorts of things. And if you like reading and seeing pictures, you can go to CalVulcans.com where Matt Kiefer and his staff do a wonderful job of keeping everybody up to date on um, what's going on in Vulcan Athletics. And Coach, since we have a minute or two left, uh, this is the first time you've been here. Uh, what, anything new? Anything you want to tell the fans? Uh, uh, what I want to tell the fans. New hobbies or? No. <laughs> uh, my three-year-old son's growing up, and he, he just wants to come to the games to watch Blaze. That's all he wants to see. But one thing I want to tell the fans is fe uh, we, February 24th, our last home game. You know, I know it's going to be senior day, but we've made that alumni day to where we're going to have our alumni game. So I want to get the word out that all bas former basketball players, please contact us. Uh, the alumni should be sending out that information. And um, we want to get a good contingent of guys back. I think it's very important that these players understand who came before them. Um, so that's one thing we want to stress is I want these guys to see guys who came before them, know why the mystique of Cal basketball is what it is, and it's because people before you sacrificed themselves for the university and for the program. So get that word out. like to see a good turnout. And um, come let these guys meet you. Sounds good. Well, like I said, for basketball alum, contact the basketball office and uh... – 
I like to see a lot of old faces because, unfortunately, I'm getting to be one of those older faces. <laughs> I probably remember a lot of those players coming back. So, Coach, good luck this week. Thank Thanks you. for coming back up. We'll see you next week. And, once again, if you can't be at the game, CUTV and WCAO have you covered. This has been the Kent McBride Show right here on CUTV. Thank you.